Hey there! Oh goodness, what is it? How's it going? Is it? Hey there, rock stars! There we go, that's it. Welcome to another exciting episode of Rock Talk. Today, we're gonna be talking about some pretty cool stuff. A bit of a uh, exciting episode for you today. Something that I had lost in my closet for a couple of years now. Completely forgot that I'd ever had it and that uh, we get to take a look at today. So without further ado, I give you Ta-da! And that's right. Ugh. Take a look at that and I know what you're thinking, which is the exact same thing that I thought when I found it on the ground. And that is, is that a diamond? <laughs> is that like, like a cut jewelry grade diamond? And to answer your question and my question from the past, I don't know, but we're gonna find out today on this episode of Rock Talk. Rock Talk! Aside from being one of the most well-known and um, sought after gems in modern history, I guess, diamonds are super extremely awesome for, for even more reasons for, for that, for multiple reasons. Personally, I uh, really have an interest in diamonds because they are a whopping 10 out of 10 on the Mohs hardness scale, which makes these the hardest, most dense, commonly occurring mineral on planet Earth. And they're not really that common, but um, they're the hardest stuff that we have on the planet, essentially, is what that means. And that means that it can do all kinds of crazy things that other rocks can't, which is totally awesome, totally sweet. Um, and uh, what makes diamond so incredibly hard is that it is so incredibly dense. What's interesting is that diamond is actually made up of carbon. It's a 100% carbon compound. But if you think of other carbon compounds like graphite, and for the most part, they're very dark, very black. You can't see through them like you can with a diamond. And it's why diamond is so different, why it's so much harder and so much more brilliant than its other counterparts is its subatomic structure. Because the carbon atoms in a diamond are so closely packed together, so closely fitted, that there is almost no room in that lattice work. It is the absolute tightest configuration for carbon that you can possibly get, making it the most hardest gem and mineral on the planet, which is super cool. So awesome. Um, but you know, there do exist out there a lot of fakes because diamonds are so expensive, so rare, and so sought after. It's a very common practice to use fake diamonds and uh, cheaper jewelry. Things like cubic zirconium are a very common alternative to a real diamond that's going to be cheaper. It's going to be very easy to manufacture compared to manufacturing a diamond which believe it or not, you can do. You can manufacture diamonds in the laboratory, which is its own crazy thing, which is totally wild. Um, but cubic zirconium and other fake varieties of diamond are going to be uh, much more attractive alternatives because of that price point, because of how much cheaper it is. And with markets that can be flooded with these fakes, it's important to know how to tell the difference. And that's what I wanna do on this episode. I have a few tried and true at home methods that can be used by anyone, including you out there rock stars, to test and see if a diamond is real or fake. So without further ado, let's jump in there. The first test involves taking a um, piece of paper, a newspaper or a book, something with black ink, dark ink on it, and then you're going to take the diamond and situate it over the text. It's going to lie right over the text in such a way that you can see through the diamond's kind of lattice structure, its, its facets, to look at the underlying text underneath. And why we're doing this is because a cut diamond has been polished in such a way that it, it, it's like a miniature hall of mirrors. It bounces light inside like um, like a prism, just bounces light in there and traps it, which is what gives it its amazing luster. And why is this its 
so sought after as a brilliant gemstone. And so when you take the diamond and you position it over a piece of text, you're not going to be able to make out the text. It's going to diffract the light around that shape and it's going to make it look completely different in some cases and deformed. And if we look here, kind of position it over, it looks like you can, I can barely make out the text on some of these, some of these here. That Y is getting completely deformed by the center of that diamond. So I'd say our mystery stone passes that first test. Our second test is an interesting one that you might not consider, um, and it is just called the breath test, known as a, a, a breath test there, where you just breathe on the diamond. You just kind of fog up the diamond as if you were fogging up the lens of your glasses or of a window. And what the diamond is going to do if it's a real diamond is it's going to unfog very quickly within a few seconds. Whereas a fake diamond, it's going to take several seconds for it to unfog. And so you just kind of, just kind of fog it up and we'll see. Whoa. Okay. So that cleared up, that cleared up really quickly. That didn't take any time at all for, for it to clear up. So I'd say we've passed our second test now. Things are looking really good. Two out of three tests have already passed, but the last one that is definitely a standard when testing diamonds, something that you hear of very, very commonly when talking about how to test a diamond is to see if it cuts glass or, well, not if it cuts glass, but if it scratches glass. And that's because diamond with a hardness of 10 is going to have a, um, is going to be much harder than glass, which is oftentimes going to be a um, silica, a, a quartz um, um, lattice work, essentially. And because quartz sits at around a seven on the hardness scale, diamond's gonna, gonna scratch that fairly easily. So for our final test, haha, gonna wanna take this glass jar and see if it will scratch. Let's see. Take a look, and that is... Okay, wow, that's definitely a scratch on that glass. Okay, all right. Well, that is um, definitely a pass on that one as well, which is pretty crazy. So our diamond has passed three out of three of those of those tests there. So there's a very good chance that it is a diamond. Now, I didn't say that it's certain that it's a diamond because it's very important to have these things verified by a professional, especially if you don't know for sure if it's a diamond or not. Um, oftentimes there are fakes, diamond fakes, that can pass these tests. They can pass the breath tests. There are certain varieties. It may be just uh, on happenstance happen to be a stone that's stronger than glass. So you can't rely on any one of these tests to be for certain. Combined, they give us a pretty good idea, pretty good understanding that this might be a diamond. But again, I'm not going to say for sure on this video until we take this to a professional. And that, my rock stars, is going to have to happen on our next episode because we're out of time today. Thanks so much for joining me. Tune in next week to find out as we delve deeper into the diamond mystery and find out um, if this is actually a diamond. See you next week. Er See you next time.